Good evening. My name is Austin and I'm one of your hosts for this evening. We really hope that you enjoyed the pre-show and the pre-show trivia. In a few moments, we're going to begin our home for Christmas service. We had so much fun preparing and filming and editing this online experience for you and your family. But before we begin, I want to let you know of a couple of ways that you can make the most of your Christmas at home experience. First off, kids. There are a couple of things you'll need for this service. If you have a nativity set, go and grab it, but make sure to ask for permission first. And if you don't have one, no worries. You'll still be able to enjoy the story. And Circle Kids, you'll also want to have your top secret envelope from your December Christmas packages nearby. But don't open them yet. Cindy and Bailey will let you know when you can do that. Now, for the rest of us, you're going to want to have a candle and a way of lighting it for the end of the service. And if you don't have a candle at your home, use your smartphone flashlight to replicate the candle experience. We are so glad you're with us and we want to welcome you home this evening. My name is John, and we're your hosts for this evening. We're so thrilled to be with you this Christmas, wherever you are. Now, this is a very different Christmas season for all of us, but we're glad that we can still gather together online. Yeah, and for those of you who aren't able to be with family or friends this season, we're just so glad that you're a part of our family this evening. Yeah. So welcome home. We've got a great evening ahead of us. We've got stuff for kids, Christmas carols to sing along with, and Pastor Paul will be sharing a Christmas message with us. Yeah, Bailey, I can't wait to hear the kids sing. What I love about Christmas is that it gives us an opportunity to celebrate that God came to be among us through his son, Jesus. So as we celebrate through story, through song, and through laughter together, <laughs> will we keep that as a center of our focus this evening? And the other great thing about this evening is that, well, we're all at home, which means that you can break out your ugliest Christmas sweater. Bailey's got it down. <laughs> get really comfortable on the couch, grab a cozy warm beverage or some eggnog, or, you know, maybe something a little bit stronger. Or maybe some Christmas cookies or candies. Yeah. Cookies you know, are good. Yeah, whatever cookies makes you feel at home. <laughs> so without any more delay, we're going to hear from our four Circle Drive preschool classes now because they'd like to wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Let's all do a little march. Let's all do a little march. Let's all do a little march and spread Christmas cheer. Let's all do a little march. Let's all do a little march. 
Wow, I love that singing. It was so great. Cindy and I were filming when we saw all of the preschool students come walking down the hallway, and they were so cute. I totally loved it. That song is going to be stuck in my head for a few days at least. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Circle Drive Preschool. Now, a question for all of you. What's your favorite Christmas song? Seriously, go ahead and, and drop it in the comments. We'd love to see it. And while you do that, Bailey, what's your favorite Christmas song? Okay, uh, my favorite Christmas song, I'd have to say, God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen. And the pentatonics version is really good. Pentatonics, you can't go wrong. Yeah, you what about you? Wrong. You know what? You can't go wrong with a little bit of John Legend or Michael Buble. You just mm, can't. You just nice. can't. <laughs> That's good. You know, Christmas songs make me remember all of those times singing in school and at church mm -hmm. and listening to Christmas jams mm -hmm. with my family as we decorate our house. Speaking of family, we know that there are many people who aren't able to have their regular Christmas traditions this year, like getting together with family and friends. And this next song reflects the longing that we have during this time. Thanks, band. Now, although many of us aren't able to gather together with family this Christmas, those of us with kids at home still get to experience Christmas through their eyes. That's right. And guess what, kids? We've got something special for you happening right now. So let's participate in the Christmas story with Cindy and I. Hi, friends. 
friends, Merry Christmas. We're so happy to be able to celebrate Christmas Eve with you all tonight. You see our nativity set here? If you have one at your house, run and grab it and you can use it right along with Bailey and I tonight. Get comfy, settle in and listen well because this is an important story about a very special night. Clip, clop, clip, clop went small donkey's hooves as he slowly climbed the last hill. Mary rode on small donkey's back. Joseph walked by small donkey's side. Mary and Joseph were very, very tired. Small donkey was even tired too. They had come a long, long way. But from the top of the hill, oh happy sight, they saw the lights of Bethlehem. Joseph walked faster now. Clip clop, clip clop, clip clop, hurried small donkey down the hill, through the gate, into the little town where they would finally rest and sleep. At the inn, Joseph asked the innkeeper for a room. We have no room, said the innkeeper. Is there no place where we can sleep? asked Joseph. Only in the stable. I'm sorry. Here comes the stable. Joseph led small donkey towards the stable. He opened the creaky old door. He held up the lantern the innkeeper gave him and he looked around inside. He saw a spotted cow. Everyone moo like a cow. Moo. And woolly lamb. What does the sheep say? Bah. bah. And he saw some empty stalls in the stable. In one empty stall, he tied small donkey. There he goes. And in another, he made a bed of straw for Mary and himself. Soon, they were fast asleep. During the night, the most wonderful thing happened. Baby Jesus was born. Everyone say, aww. Aww. <laughs> Joseph filled a manger, the wooden box that spotted cow or woolly lamb would eat from, with clean new hay for the baby. Mary wrapped the baby in a soft white cloth and she laid him in the manger. And the animals seemed pleased about baby Jesus. Spotted cow mooed softly. Moo. Woolly lamb tinkled his bell. And small donkey looked and looked. That night, in a field near the little town, shepherds were guarding their sheep. Suddenly, a bright light, as bright as the sun, shone all around them. The shepherds were afraid <gasps> and huddled together. The sheep were afraid and huddled close as well. Don't be afraid, said a kind, gentle voice. The shepherds uncovered their faces and they saw an angel all glowing with light. Said the angel, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Jesus, your savior is born. You will find him lying in a manger. Then the sky was filled with shining angels singing the glory song. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace and goodwill toward all people. As the angels went farther and farther away, they looked like a twinkling bright star in the dark night sky above Bethlehem. Come, said the shepherds. Let's go see. They ran all the way to the stable, and there they found Mary, and Joseph and baby Jesus in his manger bed. They gathered around his manger and worshiped the baby. The shepherds wanted everyone to know what the angel had said to them and about the amazing things they had seen that night. Everyone they told about the baby Jesus were amazed. Then in a far away country, wise men saw the star. They said, it is the star of the baby king. Let us go worship him and bring him presents. One wise man filled a bag with gold. Another 
fill the jar with frankincense, the perfume of flowers, and another filled a special box with myrrh, the perfume of spices. The wise men gathered up their gifts and mounted their camels, and they rode towards the star. They crossed rivers and hills and sandy deserts. Sometimes it was hot, sometimes it was cold, but they rode on following the star. When the wise men finally reached baby Jesus, after their very, very long journey, they bowed before him and worshiped the baby they called King. You guys, that is one of my favorite Bible stories. And the most amazing thing about it is it's true. It really happened so long ago. And we remember it every year when we celebrate Christmas. I know there are many of you that have been working on creating your own nativity sets from the December take-home bags you picked up last month. Now's the time to find your envelope that looks like this and says, top secret. You can open that envelope right now or tonight after the service is over. You'll find inside some pieces that will help you put the most important part of your nativity scene into place. We've enjoyed so much each Sunday celebrating this season with all of our Circle Kids families. We wish you all a wonderful Christmas tomorrow as you celebrate. Merry Christmas! Wow, that was so great. Excellent job with the story, Bailey. And I love the moves. Thank you. The moves were perfect. Yeah. You and Cindy had that down pat there. <laughs> it was super fun to be a part of, and we hope that you and your kids enjoyed it too. At Circle, we believe that the faith of the next generation is worth everything. And it's because of the generosity of our community through people's time, talents, and giving that allows us to invest in children's lives. And we get to partner with their parents to journey with them as they grow to learn about Jesus. Exactly. You know, Bailey, I couldn't say it really any better. Like we have the privilege of working with our youth here at Circle. Mm -hmm. And Bailey also works with Circle Kids. And we've seen firsthand, along with our incredible volunteers, how important and impactful church is to our young people. Yeah. Our students are discovering a faith of their own. But you see, it takes a village to raise the next generation. And you become a part of each student's story when you invest in the work 
at Circle. So, as you consider your year-end giving, would you be generous to our church this season and invest in the transformation of real live people in our community? We're going to continue our Home for Christmas service with some singing, but before we do that, let's hear a Christmas greeting from our incoming lead pastor, John Cook and family. Hey church, hope you're having a, fa a fantastic Christmas Eve. We are here as a family, we're celebrating Christmas Eve ourselves. You can just see us here. You probably see a few people that you haven't met before. That's my mother there, that's our daughter Taya, and somewhere in there at the end is my dad. So uh, that's us as a family. So. We, uh, when we got married, Dee and I had two sort of fairly different family traditions, the German one and the, uh, the English one. And so we decided we were gonna create our own first family tradition. And so what we did was we did the German thing on Christmas Eve. Uh, right now we're having our traditional German thing, uh, German meal, and we opened some of the German presents as well. And then tomorrow we have the full English, British, uh, traditional turkey, stuffing, everything, and uh, looking forward to that. But you know, firsts are really important. First, first walking of a child, first words of our child, first kiss, first relationships, and uh, you know, firsts are really important. 1906, 24th of December, was the first time that across the airways there was entertainment and words, and that was by uh, Reginald Fassenden. And he actually played the song, Oh Holy Night. And that's from 1847, that song came. And it was a, a counter-cultural song. And, and uh, Fassenden played this song. And at the end of that, he, he said the words, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth, goodwill to all men from Luke. You know, that song, as I said, Oh Holy Night, utters the words, uh, about the slave being our brother. And in the time it was written, 1847, slavery was still going right across the world. There weren't many places where slavery uh, had been stopped, made illegal. But at that time, he wrote those words. And that was really a first. And it was a countercultural thing about bringing humanity back together. But also the song is about bringing humanity uh, back to God. And that's what we're celebrating. Handel's Messiah, one of the most famous pieces of, of Christmas, it's Christmas music now it's become, is actually about the birth, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we celebrate that at this moment. And so have a fantastic Christmas Eve. Pray that tomorrow goes well for all of you as well. We're believing, we're believing for a, a, a 2021 to be a better year. And I'm excited about being able to preach uh, on the 3rd of January, going to be D and I are both going to be preaching through to you there and uh, excited to hear what uh, Pastor Paul has got to say uh, in this message, you know, home for Christmas. So have a fantastic evening and hopefully we'll see you soon. But before we get on with the rest of our service, I'm going to ask my dad just to, uh, to pray with us. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for every blessing that we share as a family, not only our close family connections, Lord, but the wider family of your church. And we thank you, Lord, that when we gather, particularly, Lord, at this time of the year, and remember your coming, we also recognize that your coming foreshadowed your death and resurrection as well. And we just give you grateful thanks, not only for the food that we're going to share tonight, Lord, but also for all that you mean to us and to each other. In Jesus' name, Amen.
sing Come adore on bended knee Christ the Lord, the newborn King Sweet hymns of joy in grateful 
love singing Christmas carols, so that was such a treat. Thanks to our amazing volunteers that help make this all possible. Yeah, I agree, Bailey. We have amazing volunteers that give their time and talents. Just such great music. And we have one more song for you, so make sure to have your candles ready because we're going to light them at the end of our service. Yep, keep them close, keep them handy, and make sure you have something to light it with. But before we light them, we are going to continue our service with a message from Pastor Paul as he concludes our series, Home for Christmas. Hello friends and welcome to our Christmas Eve. Now for me, this is kind of unreal and weird that the season's already here. The year, the year has been so different in so many ways. Our regular rhythms and patterns of life have been disrupted and changed so much that it's kind of, well, kind of weird that it's here already. I remember as a boy always being so excited about this time of the year, the anticipation and celebration that surrounded and awaited Christmas. It was just exciting, right? It's a time of family and cheer. There's a childlike wonder about the season. The season in the year where the, where the days are shorter and it, it's darker, right? Darkness is longer. And we anticipate for light to come into the darkness. And so we decorate our houses, we light fires, we decorate our tree, we see our city dress up our neighborhoods with lights and festive signs. It's a time of being together with family and friends. Our celebrations here in Saskatchewan and Canada are really different, aren't they? We are home for Christmas, literally. That means our family celebrations are very, very different than we normally would enjoy or hope for. I know that for most of us, it's difficult and even frustrating as we find ourselves separated from our loved ones. And we so desperately wish for things to be well, to be different. And as we find ourselves in this new situation, what I find so interesting about it, and really amazing actually about it, is how similar it is with the Christmas story. And I don't mean the nice story that we, we like to retell about Christmas. I mean the message behind the story of Christmas. Because the message of Christmas happens to be for people living in a perilous and fearful time. In a time where darkness and politics, economy and religion was failing people. It was right at that time that God arrived. Now this whole month as a church community, we have looked at this perilous journey that a young couple made to their hometown. Not by their choice, but because they were told to. And as Mary and Joseph arrived at Bethlehem, wishing perhaps that they wouldn't even have had to make this dangerous journey, while they were pregnant, on a donkey, for 157 kilometers, and to top it all off, as they arrived there, they found no room in the inn. And what we discovered was that God, yes, God, entered the world exactly when it all seemed to be lost. That God entered through, and in the most unwanted journey, at the most fearful time, God entered the world in the most humble way. To a most humble and ordinary and unwed couple, in a way that they, nor any of us would wish in what would have seemed as the most inconvenient time when all seemed lost and failing and fallen apart, 
That is exactly when God arrived. But this story is even better than that, friends. The story of Christmas actually starts even earlier than that. It starts with an older couple who were too old to have children. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them as well and told them that they were going to have a child. And it's kind of perfect, isn't it? Because again, the story of the Bible is that God moves and does things in a way that we don't expect. And in times that seem, in times it seems most perilous and inconvenient, when hope seems to fade, when fear seems to be all around us, that is exactly when God moves and shows up. So an angel of the Lord appeared to this older couple. And again, this is so amazing because in that culture, if you didn't have children, if you couldn't have children, the assumption was, well, you have done something wrong or, um, you know, you were out of favor with God. And yet God, in his perfect timing, tells this older couple, Elizabeth and Zachariah, that they will have a son and his name will be John. And John will point the way and he will prepare others for the Messiah, for a savior. This is such good, this is such good news. It's perfect news that in the fearful and perilous time, in an inconvenient time, with a couple who certainly look to be out of favor with God, an angel of the Lord appears to tell them that they actually are chosen to have a son who will point people to a savior. A savior who, who when he grows up, will show up and care for people who think that they are out of favor from God, who think all is lost for them, who are living also in fearful and perilous time. Isn't that amazing? Isn't it cool how God acts and moves when all seems to be lost? Through people who seem undeserving and, and seem so wrong on so many levels? That is exactly when God shows up. So God shows up to this older couple who are out of favor with God, meaning they're outsiders. And then, I love this part of the story. This is such good news for us. Uh, and then God shows up to Mary. And look, lots of us have heard lots about Mary, the mother of Jesus. We know about Mary. There's so much beautiful art, uh, stories and songs that we sing about Mary. But again, the choice God makes seems wrong if we really know the story. Because Mary would have been an outsider as well. Mary's a teenager, pledged to be married, but already pregnant. An outsider by those terms. And yet it's Mary, it's to Mary that God appears to tell her that she has found favor with God. And she must have been thinking, what are you talking about? I'm just a kid. This is such an amazing and upside down story. And after that, then God shows up to the shepherds. Now we live in a farming province, in a farming community. So we don't have to think about shepherds in a bad way. But at that time, shepherds were, were kind of unsavory crowd. They were kind of unclean, unworthy. They were, they were seen like outsiders. They couldn't go before God. For many reasons, they couldn't, they appeared out of favor. And yet that is who God shows up to, to tell, to announce to them that a savior of the whole world for all the people has arrived. I mean, isn't that amazing? And completely upside down? Again, when all was thought to be lost, when all was thought to be doomed, in a time of political strife, religious uncertainty, economic stress, in a time of being told to do something that is so hard and nobody wants to do it and frustrating and inconvenient. In this time, it is in this time that God showed up to all the wrong people. And friends, this is such good news for us. This is such good news because Jesus, the son of Mary, the baby from Bethlehem, the same baby born out of wedlock to an unlikely thought to be out of favor couple in a fearful and perilous time on a journey they did not wish to take, this Jesus will grow up, then go to all the unsavory, all the wrong, to all the thought to be out of favor people. This Jesus will go to them and announce to them, God's favor now rests on you. God's love has come to rest on you. Man, and sometimes we miss this amazing good news. And we miss it because we, well, we miss it because we know the Christmas story. And the story we know is kind of perfect and neat and cozy and warm. We have the nativity scenes built all about the story where everyone is happy. Even the animals have these human happy expressions on their faces. And everyone is just perfect and clothed right 
And the baby looks so comfy and clean. And Mary, teenage Mary, who just gave birth, is all so happy in the scene. And she's smiling and so humbled. I mean, come on. You see, friends, in the story of Christmas, in that story of Christmas, we sanitize the story. We make it too perfect and too neat. But the message of Christmas is way better than that. The message of Christmas is exactly that God showed up in the most inconvenient time to the most unlikely characters, in the most unlikely way, and brought hope and peace to a people who had no hope and no peace. You see, the message of Christmas is upside down, is messy, in a messy time that all would have wished was really different. And yet that is exactly when Jesus shows up. And this baby Jesus would become a man who would bring favor to all who thought they were undeserving and who thought they were forgotten, who thought they were outsiders. He offers hope and love to all who thought they were undeserving, to all who thought they weren't good enough. He offers life. The message of Christmas, friends, is that God shows up in a time when all seems lost, when we wish it was different. The message of Christmas is that a Savior has come and that you and I can have hope and peace and joy and that no matter what kind of situation we find ourselves in, we, because of Jesus, are no longer outsiders. That because God showed up, we have a home and we belong. See, that's the message of Christmas, friends. It reminds us that from the beginning of time, God had a place for us, a home that was just right. And everything in us aches and longs for that home. So God, in the right, perfect timing, shows up in the most unlikely way to rescue us and bring us from outsiders, from what feels to be out of favor, the forgotten, the alone, the uncertain, and to bring us inside, home for Christmas. The message of Christmas is good news. It's amazing news that God has come to save us and gift us a life, a life to the fullest. That's the good news, friends. Would you join me in reading the Christmas story in Luke chapter two? Now in those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is a Christ, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and laying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, The shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what has been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary, Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they have been told. Would you pray with me? God, we thank you so much 
for showing up in a perilous time, in a fearful time, in a time where, when we thought all was lost. Thank you, God, that choosing people that seemed all wrong, seemed as outsiders, seemed like they didn't belong, and yet, God, you chose those people through whom to show up into this world to save us all. We thank you for that gift. We thank you for the message of Christmas that you have showed up so that we could live. We thank you for that, God. We pray this in your name. Amen.
perfect end to our Home for Christmas service. Thanks to our incredible volunteers, our production teams, and well, everyone who made this possible. Yeah. Now, just a reminder, there is no service next Sunday, December 27th, as a gift to our amazing volunteers and staff. Yeah, exactly. And, but don't rush away. We have some Circle Family Christmas pictures coming up right after this. Yeah, so as we look at those Christmas pictures, type a message in the chat, talk together, and we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. I remember thinking when I was a little bit smaller That all my days would be filled with happiness and fun But then I discovered it's not that easy Some days can get you down but the rest is up to us I won't hesitate to see something great Cause I choose, I choose joy All the lights are I hear the jingle bells jingling all around Ho, ho, ho There ain't nothing like the Christmas joy All the carolers caroling through the town Everybody celebrate, it's going down Ho, ho, ho There ain't nothing like the Christmas joy Sing it with me, hey There ain't nothing like the Christmas joy All it takes is sunshine through the rain And a little bit of laughter some bad luck into a real good time It doesn't matter what life brings You gotta focus on the bright side You can be thankful, can be grateful The choice is yours and mine I won't hesitate to see something great Cause I choose, I choose joy All the lights on lights, snow on the ground I hear the jingle bells jingling all around Christmas joy. 